It's time for highlights from tonight's hard-hitting high school football action. Sports Extra starts now. Sponsored by New West Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Good evening, Nebraska, and welcome into week four of Sports Extra, where teams are starting to separate from the pack as York and Scott's Bluff square off tonight. York hosting top 10 class B foe in Scott's Bluff. The Bearcats led 20 to 10 at halftime and are ready for more as Braden Stoll hooks up with Jackson Allen, who shows off some agility to move them into York territory there. Then Stoll looking to the end zone later in this drive, but Austin Finney makes a flying interception. Unfortunately, the Duke's offense can't capitalize. Now, this doesn't, doesn't get the defense fourth and one, though, as York comes up with big-time stop takeover on downs. This time, the Dukes have some offensive rhythm. Ryan Seavers with that quick release to Finney, who snakes down the sideline for the solid pickup. Then the Seavers, they're going to air this one out to Garrett Ivey, who's going to make the great catch. Nice cut back here before racing past the goal line. York closed the gap 2017, but runs out of time to complete the comeback 2017. Now, NTV's Nicole Weaving was there and joins us live, Nicole. So, you were there. What happens when it comes to close games like this? It comes down to a player, too. Take us there and tell us what happened. Darren, when the Dukes go back and look at the film from this game, there'll be about five to six plays that could be viewed as missed opportunities in such a close loss. It starts midway through the second quarter when Garrett Ivey had his man beat on a third and ten, but quarterback Ryan Seavers just couldn't find him in the end zone, so York had to settle for three points on a field goal instead of potentially seven with a touchdown. And later in that same frame, Seth Erickson would go off for a 67-yard touchdown but have it called back for a holding call. And that time, the Dukes unable able to turn it into any points as they actually missed the field goal. So this game realistically at half could have been potentially tied or York just even in a more comfortable situation of just a one being down by just one possession. Then out of the break, as we saw in the highlights, they had that interception that they were unable to capitalize on. And then really the ultimate game changing moment on that would be on Scott's Bluffs final drive. The Dukes putting them in two fourth down situations, but ultimately the Bearcats able to pick up both of them. That allowed them to just run down the clock and ultimately hold York from being able to get another offensive possession and try and, you know, aim for the end zone one last time. So while there's disappointment for the Dukes tonight, it's still pretty early in the season. They're still two and two. And Scott's Bluff honestly looking like quite the formidable foe in Class B. So York just hoping to brush this one off and then move forward into next week, despite those couple plays that they let slip away. But for now, reporting in York, I'm Nicole Weaving, sending it back to you, Darren. Yeah, thanks. Well, like any good player, you got to shake it off and move on next. Great insight as always. Next up, it's a battle of unbeatens as Aurora is hosting Platte View. Now Aurora playing in a battle of unbeatens against the Platte View team. Now early miscues from the Trojans as the snap goes over the head of the punter and out of the end zone, we got a safety. Then the Huskies on offense and who else but Carlos Calazo going to work, sprinting down the sideline and dragging down the M in the end zone as Roars up 9-0 quickly. Platts for you. They're going to respond. Ensuing drive, Jared Cool floats it over the middle to Ezra Stewart, who makes the rest of the way for a touchdown in what would become the Trojans' only points of the night as Aurora just continues to look unbeatable. Huskies going for it on fourth and eight. And Booker Shireman connects with Carson Stair with the pickup for necessary yardage. Then Drew Canoost. Nursing the shoulder injury, but he's coming up big as he's a prime time player, 24-6 after the first, and they go on to win big, 58-6. Centura traveling south to take on Wood River. The Eagles, uh, Wood River leading 14-0 to start the second half. Now Centurions look to make something happen. Jacob Rule to Quentin Morris. Morris is losing control, the ball, and the Eagles recover the fumble Ruski on the turnover. Wood River in century territory now. Waylon Cronk with a quick handoff to Laramie Freer, giving the Eagles a first and goal on the one yard line. Eagles looking to punch it in as Eagles do in the end zone as Cronk here to read. Graves sneak around the outside for the touchdown. Wood River leads 22 to nothing. And Sir and Chira unable to make a comeback as Wood River wins this one big 29 to nothing. 
Out Jack Sale with the Wildcats were clicking on all cylinders tonight as they gang tackle the Silver Lake to force a punt. Third quarter now, leading 43 0. Mustangs come up with a big fourth down to force a punt. But sophomore Jacob Halverson bulldozing his way through the secondary as he gone. He see Jacob, he's off to, we see you off to the races. He goes 50 yards for the house call as Axtell wins big 51 to nothing. Carney Catholic stars open up the season 2-0 before dropping last week's tough physical game to Minden. Could they get back their winning ways? Taking on Milford out to Kearney where they were looking for redemption. And early on, this was a defensive battle. Garrett O'Hare and Logan Rog Rogish combined for the sack. They're forcing a punt. And the Eagles answer right back as Nelson Germis says, anything you can do, I can do better as he sacks one there. But second quarter now, coach says, boys, let's speed this tempo up and switch it up. And boy, did that work. Carson Murphy rolls out to his right, finds Jacob Lowe, who's making guys miss. And he's coming right into our living room right there for the huge game. Two plays later, Murphy with the dime to Lowe, who gets behind the defenders. And we've got our first score of the game, 7 nothing stars. But ensuing drive, the big man of from Milford, Hunter Orbney, bouncing, bruising, telling defenders to get out of the way inside the red zone for the huge first down. But I said this was a defensive battle as Carney, they would ball out on the defensive side as they're not, they're gonna stop them first, second, third, and fourth and goal as they get the sack, as they win a close one, seven to six. Holdridge hoping to flex a big time homecoming win over the Bisons of McCook late in the first quarter. Dusters up seven nothing when Adam Duggar goes deep, finds Lucas Gomez Wilson behind two defenders and hauls it in for the grab. Tripped up at the 10 yard line. First play of the second quarter now. Third and goal from the seven and Brett Fraker, all truth, ties it up at seven for the Bison. Duster's next possession. And they're gonna take the spread option here right away and it's meant to be a run as Jaden Jansen gets to the edge and he rumbles for the big 22 yard gain as he moves them into plus territory for Holdridge. Slow drive down, Holdridge goes for fourth and four. McCook swallows them up on the turnover as their defense was on fire tonight. Good defense. What does it turn into, folks? Good offense as Duggar takes the read option himself, and he's loose, digging in. 39 yards for the score to put McCook up 14 to seven, and they go on to roll big 42 to seven. Let's head to Lincoln High, where the Lynx were hosting Grand Island, both schools at two and one. First quarter now, Grand Island off to a hot start. Alex Zing Zingle set up a 29-yard Caleb Rush Richardson punt for good position. And then he goes 41 yards for the tutty. 7-0 Grand Island. But the Lynx are quick to respond. 32 yards pass to Donis Richardson to Ben Goy for the first down. And they set up Lincoln High. Ties this one as Julian Babinoff runs it in for the quick five-yard strike. Seven all. Second quarter now. Babinoff, he's going to scoop up the errant GI snap, and he's going to rumble, bumble, and stumble his way in to put up 14-7. But guess what? Grand Island says, yeah, not so fast, as Jace Crimson. He's going to score from four yards out. This one's tied up at 14, and GI hangs on strong as they go on to win big 27-14. Storm warnings tonight is Gilter as Giltner, rather, as the Hornets take on High Plains. Storm off to a strong start. Quarterback handoff to Wyatt Urkowski. Sneaks in for the hole. High Plains lead 6-0 early. And they have something to say about it. Giltner deep in their own terry as territory. Ethan Ballard to Preston Larson. He's 2-5 all the way. Game knotted at 6 midway through the second quarter. High Plains with the ball now. Hayden Helgoth. Look into Aiden Hands, but Giltner's Marshall Humphrey, he swoops in there for the nice interception. Turnover there, and High Plains, they're going to take this one in a close one, 28-12. And Deller Dragons traveled over to Kennesaw to build off the Blue Devils, but Kennesaw was aggressive all night on defense as Ryder Prescott, he's going to get the sack in the backfield. Nearly coughs up the ball, but they keep it there. Dragons bounce back, though, as Landon Bailey here. He's going to toss it back to Holden McDonald, who throws the ball right in the hands of Hutch Vasek, putting the Dragons within scoring distance. But Deller continues to play aggressive on both sides of the ball. 
as McDonald sweeps in to Maddox Wagner on his feet. The Dragons finally put the numbers on the board as Landon Bailey gets a quarterback sneak in the end zone. The Devils weren't done yet, scoring 12 yards here as Adam Danker Gill glides in for the defense to run as they go on to win. Kennesaw wins big, 50 to six. Now Grand Island Central Catholic playing at home tonight against Aquinas, and they're trying to bring some momentum to the game. Some big yards here as Lyndon Despero says, not today as he makes a nice pick turnover there. Aquinas tired of playing some games. They step on the line, drives it home for the touchdown to bring it up seven nothing. End of the first quarter as Aquinas takes the lead after another touchdown, 14 nothing to begin the second quarter as Aquinas Catholic was up big, 35 to nothing at the end of the third quarter. We had a couple matinee games early in the day. Let's check those out. Out to Franklin, where the Flyers were coming off a huge win over Elba, looking to keep that winning streak alive. And it was sophomore Zayden Wilsey. There he is, right there, going in fourth and goals. He wouldn't be denied. Ensuing drive, it's Dylan Peterson with a quarterback keeper, and like Mustangs do, they race down the sideline for the house call. We're tied up at seven. But this game belonged to the sophomore Wilsey as he's going to take the interception here, return it back to the 40-yard line. And then two plays later, he, he's a bad man as he gets the touchdown as they go up and they go on to win big 70-20. to 20. And Northwest still searching for their first win as they kick off against Elkhorn. And it was a tough start for the Vikings as Austin's Payne passes to EJ Aarons, wrangled up by Tommy Mechna, and he holds it but GI led early. But Northwest special teams came in clutch as Peyton Atwood's punt drops it right around midline as the Wolves' Chris Thiessen. He's not going to be able to handle this one as they fall on the defense. But GI Northwest can't punch it in. And guess what, folks? They finally get their first win as they come all the way back and they win big 24-20. to 20.